Mournful voices remembering the unimaginable tragedy that struck this nation five years ago today. Mary Lynn Edwards Angel. Laura Angel. Terrorists took the lives of nearly 3,000 people that day, but the memories of those lives remain strong. Here at home, New Orleans firefighters and police remember their own and speak to the losses with a profound understanding of tragedy. 9-11 means much more than the devastation that happened in New York. It means that this country has grown from that disaster. An event that changed the course of history. Those who now serve on the front lines of new battles overseas also commemorated it, sharing in the sense of loss and the spirit of renewal on this fifth anniversary of September 11th. Good evening, I'm Dennis Wolter. And I'm Angela Hill. It's a day etched forever in our nation's memory. Five years ago today, thousands were killed in the worst terrorist attacks on U.S. soil. The reading of names went on for hours at the World Trade Center site as spouses and partners took turns honoring loved ones. Bells tolled as the crowd stopped to observe a moment of silence at the exact times each tower was hit by the hijacked planes. In Washington, relatives of the 184 people who died in the attack on the Pentagon gathered there this morning to remember their loved ones. The building has long since been repaired and construction has now begun on a large memorial to remember the victims. Mike Goldfein joins us live from the Pentagon with more. Mike? Well, Angela, in fact, that memorial construction site is just behind us here on the right, and on the other side is the west front of the Pentagon, where the Flight 77 struck five years ago today. More on all of that in a moment. At this morning's memorial service, the vice president struck a defiant tone, calling the terrorists tyrants who are trying to murder their way to power. Family members gathered outside as a large flag was unfurled from the Pentagon roof, just as it was on this day five years ago. We were meant to take it personally, and we still do take it personally. The west side of the Pentagon today, it's almost impossible to tell what happened here. The only reminder, a small cornerstone recovered from the rubble, still scorched by the fire. At 9.37 that morning, American Airlines Flight 77 struck with such force that it carved through three of the Pentagon's five rings. <laughs> All of a sudden, the concussion just shook everything and um, parts of the ceiling started coming down. 184 innocent people died, 59 on the plane, 125 inside the building. He was probably literally, you know, 50, 60 yards from where we're standing right now. Jim Lachek's brother Dave was a civilian employee at the Pentagon. You keep moving on and try to do the, do the best you can, but uh, even now I get choked up sometimes thinking about it. Our lives changed that day. Rosemary Dillard's husband, Eddie, was on board Flight 77. I don't want to remember him here. Because what I got back was not very much of his body. But both Rosemary and James have worked hard to make sure no one forgets. They've been the driving force behind construction of a two-acre memorial in front of the impact site. 184 benches, each carrying the name of a victim, suspended over lighted pools of water. The memorial is slated to be dedicated exactly two years from today. Its entire $32 million cost has been paid for with private donations. At the Pentagon, Mike Goldfein, Channel 4 Eyewitness News. In Shanksville, Pennsylvania, a somber ceremony remembered the 40 people who died on hijacked Flight 93. Oh, beautiful. This morning, former Homeland Security Director Tom Ridge addressed the crowd. Then later in the day, the President and First Lady took part in a wreath-laying ceremony at the site. President Bush will make a special primetime address to mark the anniversary. You can watch it live tonight right here on Channel 4 at 8 o'clock. 
Five years after the terrorist attacks on America, the changes which stem from that day continue to affect our country and the world. Among those most deeply affected were the nation's first responders, including those here in New Orleans. Bill Capo attended the ceremony they held on their fifth anniversary. At Engine 27 today, there was something to smile about. They've just moved back into the station house after months of working in a trailer. But every day here, they live with the lessons of 9-11. It brings you back to the fact that of how dangerous this job really is. And uh, any call you go out on can be your last call. 9-11 changed fire departments nationwide, including New Orleans, where they think differently now. It's brought terrorism to a heightened alert. Uh, I mean, you're always thinking about when you go out on different calls, you know, if it could be a terrorism call or something like that. It's heightened training. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. Under a flag at the peak of an arch created by fire trucks, New Orleans first responders gathered at the 9-11 memorial in Lake Lawn Metairie Cemetery to honor the heroes and remember the victims. Certainly in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, we know better than ever what it means to serve and to uh, reflect on and, and honor the men and women that actually lost their lives in the line of service. We as first responders, we know that the, that's not the last one. Katrina's not the last major devastation. 911 was not. And we have to continue to train and, and prepare for these types of things. Fire Chief Charles Perrin says one thing that remains crucially important to this department, to every man and woman in it, is knowing that the community supports them now more than ever. If you feel you're doing so much and it's not appreciated, it's not remembered, it, it could be devastating to the morale of our fire department. So when the people in the street tell our guys they're doing a good job, when they come over and bring them some baked cookies sometimes, it really makes a difference. Land that I love. I'm Bill Capo, Channel 4, Eyewitness News. For more 9-11 anniversary coverage and to leave a message on our remembrance board, go to WWLTV.com. President Bush says this anniversary provides an opportunity for the United States to recommit itself to the war against terrorism. It's a sentiment echoed by Senator David Vitter, who just returned from a trip to Iraq, and he joins us live from Washington with more on his visit. And Senator, we appreciate you joining us. You went over there really to talk to some Louisiana soldiers. Absolutely. My main goal was to visit Louisiana soldiers, talk to them directly, look them in the eye, and really say thank you for the enormous sacrifice and commitment they have made to our country. And it was an honor for me to be able to do that. And Senator, do you have any sense of how much the Iraqis are taking over this mission that uh, our forces are involved in over there? Well, of course, that's our biggest focus, transferring more and more responsibilities to the Iraqis. And we're making progress there, particularly on the Army side. Police side is a little tougher, a little slower, but particularly on the Army side. As you know, in the last week or so, we've transferred or begun the transfer of uh, military units to direct Iraqi control. That's going to take several months, but, but uh, some of those units have already transferred.